Hello, and welcome to the hardware setup of the IWR6843AOP evaluation module. We will first cover flashing mode before moving on to functional mode later on. This guide is intended for users with an IWR6843AOP EVM antenna module. This video guide will walk through setting up the board in flashing and functional modes as a standalone EVM. This setup does not require the use of the millimeter wave IC boost carrier board. This setup will involve these four main steps. Please follow along closely and feel free to pause the video at any time to check that the instructions have been followed correctly. The necessary hardware for this setup is an IWR6843 AOP EVM and a micro USB cable. Please note that a JTAG debug can only be done using the millimeter wave IC boost carrier card. To use the IWR6843 AOP EVM in standalone mode, the switches on the EVM need to be set as shown in the image. For the switches labeled not applicable, I usually set them to off for convenience. Pause the video and ensure that all switches are correctly set. Next, connect the micro USB cable to the EVM at the connector shown in the image, then to a PC. Note that a separate power supply is not needed as the EVM gets power from the USB connection itself. LEDs on the EVM should turn on when connected to USB, as shown in the image. Note that for higher power applications, the other power-only USB port can be used with a power bank or something similar, providing more power than the limits of the PC USB port. In order to enable flashing mode on the EVM, set the SOP switch on the back of the EVM to ON. To ensure that the correct SOP mode is latched once power has been applied, Power cycle the device by pressing and releasing the NRST switch identified in the image. The green LED near the switch should toggle off and on when the switch is depressed and released. The LED will toggle regardless of the SOP state as the reset is needed to refresh the SOP state. It is important to note that after any SOP mode jumpers are changed, the NRST switch should always be toggled to ensure a reliable boot up state. The device is now ready for flashing. Now that the device is in flashing mode, it can be flashed. In order to flash the device, make sure that the EVM is already set up for flashing mode. In addition to having a PC running Windows 7 or 10 with the UniFlash tool downloaded and installed, the UniFlash tool can be installed on the TI Resource Explorer. First, the COM port numbers must be obtained. With the EVM powered and connected to the PC via micro USB, open up the device manager. Notice that the EVM exports two virtual COM ports as indicated in the ports section of the device manager. Make note of the correct COM port number for each of the two ports for use later. The actual COM port numbers for your specific device may be different than the ports indicated in the image. In the reference image, COM ports are color-coded according to their functionality. Use the below table as a guide to the port naming and function in the device manager. If the COM ports do not appear as above, driver installation is required. Please install the appropriate driver on the TI Resource Explorer, restart your PC, and try again. The second step in flashing the device is to load the binary image file using UniFlash. First, Open the UniFlash tool using the Windows Start menu on your PC. Once UniFlash is open, go to the New Configuration section and locate and select IWR6843. Click Start to proceed when the selected device and connection match the image. Next, click the Settings and Utilities tab. Under Setup, fill in the COM port text box with the port number corresponding to the enhanced COM port noted earlier. For example, according to the previous device manager screen image, COM1 should be replaced with COM25. Following filling in the COM port, click the Program tab. 
for Meta Image 1, click on Browse and locate the binary image file to be flashed onto the device. After clicking OK, the name and size of the selected binary file should appear, while leaving Meta Image 2 through 4 blank. Note that the binary file to flash and its location is specified in the user's guide of each lab. After doing this, power cycle the device by pressing and releasing the NRST switch as shown in the images. Lastly, after the binary image file has been selected, the load image button is enabled. Click the load image button to flash the device. If flashing is successful, the UniFlash console will indicate success, program load completed successfully. If there is an error while flashing, please pause the video and read through these common causes of flashing failure in order to correct the failure. Need more help? Consult the UniFlash Quick Start Guide or search for your issue or post a new question on the Millimeter Wave E2E forum. Once the device has been flashed, it can now be set up for functional mode. This setup will involve these four main steps. Please follow along closely and feel free to pause the video at any time to check that the instructions have been followed correctly. Note that steps one and two may be skipped if the hardware setup has not changed since flashing mode. The necessary hardware for this setup is an IWR6843 AOP EVM and a micro USB cable. Again, please note that a JTAG debug can only be done using the Millimeter Wave IC Boost carrier card. To use the IWR6843 AOP EVM in standalone mode, the switches on the EVM need to be set as shown in the image. For the switches labeled not applicable, I usually set them to off for convenience. Pause the video and ensure that all switches are correctly set. Next, connect the micro USB cable to the EVM at the connector shown in the image, then to a PC. Note that a separate power supply is not needed, as the EVM gets power from the USB connection itself. LEDs on the EVM should turn on when connected to USB, as shown in the image. In order to enable functional mode on the EVM, set the SOP switch on the back to OFF, as shown in the image. To ensure that the correct SOP mode is latched once power has been applied, power cycle the device by pressing and releasing the NRST switch identified in the image. The green LED near the switch should toggle OFF and ON when the switch is depressed and released. The LED will toggle regardless of the SOP state as the reset is needed to refresh the SOP state. It is important to note that after any SOP mode jumpers are changed, the NRST switch should always be toggled to ensure a reliable boot up state. Need more help? Consult the Millimeter Wave IC Boost and Antenna Module User's Guide or search for your issue or post a new question on the Millimeter Wave E2E forum.